So I quit drinking, which you could argue is not a good thing and is a problem for a number of reasons. The first of which is that I sell homebrew equipment and quitting drinking, for me, it's kind of like quitting my job, uh, which would be cool except for the fact that my job is awesome. Brewing beer and drinking it for a living is pretty much amazing. But after a decade of doing this, honestly, it's starting to wear on me because doing something like this for just one year, let alone 10, involves so much alcohol. Initially, my plan was to quit drinking cold turkey for just a month and I honestly didn't think it would be that big of a deal, um, but I was wrong. I can say definitively that actually it sucked really bad. I actually underestimated how ingrained my evening drinking habit was. It was just a part of my uh, daily ritual, I guess, and skipping that now it just made me feel like something was missing. I eventually solved that problem, which I'll tell you about, but before that, I should say that after I moved past the initial shock, I actually kind of liked certain aspects of not drinking. For example, I noticed that I slept better at night, I was way more productive at work during the day, and I was more recovered for my fitness routine as well. Though there was also a second problem with my plan, which is that I love alcohol. And where I'm at now is kind of how this legend puts it. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> yeah, so I used to drink. I still drink, but I used to too. However, during my month off, I learned some skills that made it much easier for me to drink a lot less than I used to, which I think is actually a good thing. And it's something that I've kept up to this day. So here's what I'm going to tell you in this video. And here's how it's different from the other videos on this topic. Instead of telling you how I quit drinking and lost a bunch of weight and got shredded uh, and was more productive and my life was awesome, I'm going to tell you how I continue to drink but drink less and how I made improvements in other areas of my life as well. Though before I go any further, if you clicked on this video because you think you have a serious drinking problem and need to quit entirely, it's entirely possible that you're right. I don't personally have this issue, but I have a good number of friends who actually are incapable of drinking any amount of alcohol without it devolving into an absolute mess. Some people genetically do not have the ability to stop or control alcohol use in any amount despite the consequences um, that that imposes. Alcoholism is a serious disease and if you're worried that you fall into this camp, you should get professional help. So anyway, um, let's get the awkward part of this video out of the way. This was my initial thumbnail concept for this video. That's a picture of me hoarding a beer without a shirt on. I'm 42 years old. I'm not exactly Brad Pitt fight club fit, but I feel like I'm doing all right for a dad in his 40s. Anyway, getting older is inevitable, but certain aspects can actually be a choice if you are proactive. As we age, our metabolism slows down, so we gain weight. Our body chemistry changes, and we lose muscle. Uh, we don't recover as quickly, we become injured more easily, and we also become more susceptible to health issues and disease. For someone like me, who can show up to my job and literally get wasted every single day and count it as work, the clock could potentially be ticking pretty fast because excessive alcohol consumption increases the rate of progression of all of those things I just mentioned. And as someone who puts a high value on their health and well-being, it was important to me to make sure that my alcohol use was in check because I have all of these other things in my life that I do to try to stay young and healthy and I think I'm doing a fairly good job with it. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's not uncommon for people to comment on our videos and say something like, how do you drink so much beer and stay in shape? Well, that's what I'm going to try to answer in this video. Um, in short, it's a combination of how much beer I actually do or do not drink, which is variable, as well as a lot of other stuff. 
Let's talk about the drinking first. Like I said, I quit drinking for one solid month. In the grand scheme of things, that month probably didn't do a ton for my health. But I learned some skills during that month that I still use today, which helps me drink less than I used to. So how did I quit drinking? Well, I locked myself in my house, um, partially um, metaphorically and I guess somewhat literally, and made myself become accustomed to a daily routine that didn't involve alcohol every single afternoon or evening. Most importantly though, I learned how to compensate for the lack of alcohol by discovering substitutions that took the place of the daily booze consumption that I was used to. Mainly, soda water, hop water, tea, and a beer, zero calorie soda, smoothies, and protein shakes. The last few items on the list worked particularly well for me because when I'm not drinking, I crave sugar like a junkie in rehab, which is probably due to the fact that beer has a decent amount of residual sugar in it and I had become used to that. The latter items in that list have at least some artificial sweetener in them, which kind of tricked my brain into thinking that nothing's really changed. Now here's a ninja level pro tip. When a lot of people take a month off drinking, they do it in January, hence the term dry January, though I'd recommend you not do that. Uh, the pro move is to actually do dry February. Why? Because February typically only has 28 days, which means it'll be about 10% easier than doing dry January, which has 31 days. Now, unfortunately, this is actually a leap year and there are 29 days in February though it's still the shortest month and if you only go 28 we'll still count it all right number two after my month off i dialed my drinking back from two to three drinks per day to one to two max and sometimes even zero to one but if i go out to see a show or i have friends in town or i go on vacation i don't hesitate to cut loose i just try not to do that very often well i try to go on vacation as much as possible but you know, you know what I mean. Now, say you've been watching this channel for years, you're a brand new brewer, you just got a brew system uh, in December and you're fired up to just hammer down on making and drinking booze. Well, say you also are interested in this idea of doing the dry February or January or whatever. Um, this would be the perfect time to brew a beer that requires a little bit of age. Brew something stronger like a double or a triple or even just a stout which actually tastes better after it's sat around for a month you do your dry month and then you're free to drink again and on the off chance you actually learn something from your not drinking for a month experience your beer will last a little bit longer than it would have otherwise all right number three i work out i work out a lot i go to the gym five days a week um, it's my number one priority every single day and i think some sort of fitness routine is hugely important for staying healthy um, and i also think there are three key elements that every fitness routine needs to have to be effective those elements are strength conditioning cardio conditioning and mobility um, it gets a bad rap but i think the easiest plug and play solution that covers at least some aspect of all of these elements is CrossFit. I more or less go to a CrossFit class every single day. I just show up and I do what they tell me to do. I don't have to think about anything, which makes it super easy. And almost all of my current closest friends are the people that I work out with that I met at the gym. For me, uh, I think, and for these folks as well, it's like we get to show up to recess class or gym class every day and hang out with one another and have fun, which makes it feel less like work and more just like a fun thing to do, an enjoyable social event. CrossFit classes generally consist of a warm up, a strength session, where you do stuff like deadlift or back squat or bench press or Olympic lifts. Then you do what's called a workout of the day, which is more cardio focused. The better coaches will then have everyone stretch a little bit at the end for mobility. And this all happens in the span of 60 minutes. So you hit all three of those areas every day in just an hour, which is why I think that it's one of the best options. Though I will say that I also think CrossFit is somewhat biased towards strength 
over cardio and mobility. And I think there's actually room for additional conditioning there as well to really round things out, which is why I often run on the weekends as well. Um, usually on Saturday or Sunday, sometimes even both if I have the time. Um, now, if you're the kind of person who hates running or you think you suck at running, I have very good news for you before you click off this video. I run, and I would recommend that you run extremely slow. I do what's called zone two training, which is where I run slow enough to keep my heart rate under 140 beats per minute. Um, I do this because it actually maximizes endurance while simultaneously burning the maximum amount of fat. You can look this up on the internet. It's a real thing. It's called the crossover concept. Also, believe it or not, the difference in the amount of calories you burn while running one mile really fast versus running one mile really slow is minimal. Um, the only difference there is the amount of time that it takes to do the work. So honestly, if you don't like running, just put on a podcast and start walking. I try to log 10 to 12 miles every weekend if I can. And like I said, I go slow. And because I absolutely hate running in cold weather, I've recently started swimming, which I think may even be better than running. Um, running tends to fatigue my legs to the point that it inhibits lifting sessions. Sometimes it just makes my legs hurt in general. Swimming is super low impact and might be the perfect counterpart to strength conditioning. Uh, by the way, I grew up in and around water, but I never learned to freestyle swim until just a couple of weeks ago when I started swimming. So it's never too, uh, never too late to learn something. Number four, I try to eat as healthy as possible. Don't get me wrong though, when my wife leaves town and my boy and I are left to our own devices, uh, we speed dial Pizza Hut as soon as we see the tail lights in the street. But for the most part, I try to eat mostly lean animal protein. So think like chicken breast as opposed to ribeye steak. Vegetable protein shakes, I actually love Orgain, which is pea protein, a lot of greens, and as much unprocessed food as possible though, I do eat an RX bar and an Epic beef jerky bar pretty much every day as a snack, both of which are processed, but they're also mostly protein. And I think the key for me is eating mostly protein and very low carbs. If you're looking to get stronger and or lose weight and look stronger, protein is the answer. More protein, fewer carbs, trust me. Number five, from time to time, I intermittent fast. I find that I actually lose too much weight along with some strength if I do this while I'm running, but uh, when I'm not running on the weekends, I try to stop eating by 7.30 p.m. and then I don't eat again until 11.30 p.m. It's called an 8.16 schedule. And I'm gonna tell you about somebody else you, you probably know here uh, who does this as well. Here's the thing, if you wanna do this but you think you can't um, or it's not possible, don't take my word for it. Three of my good drinking buddies all do similar stuff to this. My buddy CH from the Homebrew for Life channel and the Happy Hour live stream channel takes a month off drinking almost every year, generally January, February, something like that. He also hits cardio at the gym a few times a week and he often only drinks one night a week albeit very hard, but he limits it to once. And my, my buddy Martin from the Homebrew Challenge channel, who literally made a video about drinking every single day, um, does intermittent fasting. And my buddy Peter from the Genus Brewing channel, who is a home brewery and actually owns a brewery, uh, puts in miles every single day. He's a CrossFit, or I'm sorry, he's a cross country coach on the side. So he has a pretty strong fitness regimen as well. If you have thoughts on this, um, or a routine that works for you, leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching and cheers to whatever you're drinking or not drinking.